Scott Kaplinsky from uh, CBS 58. I am talking to Roman Lagari. I'm the guy you've been waiting for. I'm your last one. I made it. <laughs> you, made it. you made it. Congratulations. Uh, we're sp- talking about One Life. What an astounding film. You know, what an astounding film. You know, in the States here, we're not aware of this story. And I think this is going to be an important movie and getting the word out. How much did you know about this story uh, but before starting the film? Not not a lot. I mean, he Nicholas Winton did not seek a, a great deal of attention for himself over his life. He was very reluctantly thrust into the spotlight right at the end of his life. Um, and if you watch the clip of That's Life, which is the... Um, sort of variety show, chat show that was a big TV show uh, when I was growing up where he is um, surrounded by all the children who who are the descendants of the the people whose lives he he saved. You can see that he is kind of confused and disorientated and, and, and yeah, I think he felt for the whole of his life that he didn't really do anything particularly exceptional. So, so yeah, I wasn't very aware of who he was. I had seen the clip and I had a vague sense that he was involved in like the kinder transport, but no, I, I didn't really know in any detail really what he'd achieved. Yeah, you know, and I, in watching that clip, it almost seems as though he wasn't aware of the impact he had. Uh, as far as the character the woman you play, Doreen Werner, how much material was there for you to to jump in on and and do some research on? There was actually loads, which was great because really? you know initially you know when I went on Wikipedia there was she was there is an entry for her so I was like oh well so somebody's put that there and then you know I dug a bit deeper and she actually um, published her diaries from the war. Oh. So her, you know, and this entire period was covered in those, um, as well as collections of her letters. And, you know, she lived a really extraordinary life. You know, she became uh, an economist. She, you know, graduated from Cambridge in the 1920s, which for a woman is incredibly unusual, became an economist, lectured in Europe in economic theory. So she was a linguist as well, and then ended up becoming a humanitarian in the 1930s. Initially, they were just dealing with very small numbers of refugees, but then obviously as, as Nazi kind of Germany went into overdrive you know it became thousands and thousands of people flooding in and so she had this really extraordinary unusual life um and luckily you know we we have a really great record of it because uh, she kept a diary and you know she went into a lot of detail about her humanitarian work and then you know how difficult it was you know for her to get her hair done <laughs> so oh. it was really a, <laughs> an amazing portrait of her it, it sounds as though she needs a movie of her own as well. Yeah, well, I think history is, is is I mean, the great thing about this film is it reminds us that the world and history is full of people like her and him. You know, that, that actually, you know, those stories of individual heroism are not as rare, I think, as we, you know, sometimes sadly feel that, you know, right. there are many, many people in the world who've done extraordinary things with their life. And, you know, we will continually, I think, through, a, a, you know, f- as filmmakers discover stories like this and have the opportunity to remind people how extraordinary and how humanity exists in terrible circumstances and will always exist in kind of terrible circumstances. Yeah, yeah, as you say, you know, the world today, I mean, I look at what's happening and then I see this man, I see the character you're playing and I'm like, you know, where are these people? Uh, You know, I saw in another interview, you said that it was a great responsibility to to be in this film. Did it change you in any way playing Miss Werner? Yeah, I think it really did. Not just playing her, because as you say, sometimes it can be intimidating to play people who were such extraordinary people, so selfless, Um, you know, apparently ordinary people. And yet I'm not sure that if I was born in that time in history that I would be getting on a train to go and rescue um, refugees from, you know, ensuing murder. But at the same time, I do feel like the, the message of the film, which is that, you know, one person, like the one life can obviously relate to the children involved, but can also relate to yourself. Like one person can make a difference. And, and, you know, if one person just reaches out to one other person and makes a difference in one other individual's life, you've made a difference. And sometimes if that's all you can do, that's enough. And I think 
the misfortune about the age that we live in sometimes is that we're so overwhelmed with humanitarian catastrophe all the time that it's quite disabling, you know, and also I think it can lend you a skewed view of human beings and you just think, oh, there's no point, we're all ter terrible. And, you know, they lived in an age where I think the possibility of human goodness was perhaps more alive in their kind of consciousness. I think that's a good point. Ramallah Gary, thank you so much for talking to me. Incredible film, uh, really re loved it. Thank you. Thanks, lovely to meet you. Bye. <laughs>